Today I'd like to explain how to multiply permutations in cycle notation. So first let me uh, just explain how to multiply permutations. Let's start with two permutations. So one permutation might be 1, 3, 2, 4. So it's swapping 1 and 3 and it's swapping 2 and 4. And let's say I want to multiply this or compose this with a permutation 1, 4, 3, 2. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to write this as a single permutation, but first let's draw the picture. Okay, we'll do the picture before we get, get the answer. So what's going on on the left hand side is that we have one function and then followed by another function. So let's draw out what each of those functions do. So this first function, 1, 3, 2, 4, what it does is it's going to act on the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's a permutation, so it's going to send them to some reordering of themselves. And it's sending 1 to 3, 3 back to 1, it's sending 2 to 4, and 4 back to 2. Okay. And then this composition notation means first do this function and then do this function. So what happens next is we're going to do the function 1, 4, 3, 2. And it's going to permute these elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. It sends 1 to 4. It sends 4 to 3. It sends 3 to 2. And then it sends 2 back to 1. So the answer on the right hand side, we can already figure out what it should be. The way we do this is we're going to sort of compose these grades together. We're going to um, <clears throat> follow 1 all the way down, follow 2 all the way down, follow 3 all the way down, and then follow 4 all the way down. So what should we get on the right hand side? Okay, what is this sort of equal to? Well, 1 is being mapped to 3, which then maps to 2. So overall, 1 is mapping to 2. 2 is mapping to 4, which is then going to 3. So overall, 2 is going to 3. 3 is mapping to 1, which is then going to 4. So overall, 3 is going to 4. And we already know 4 should be going back to 1, but let's check. 4 is going to 2 and then to 1. So yes, overall, 4 is going to 1. Okay, so from this picture on the right-hand side, we should already be able to guess what the answer is going to be in cycle notation. But let me teach you how to, how to do this, um, <clears throat> even without drawing the pictures. Okay, so we're, we want to see where 1 goes. So let's start off by seeing where 1 goes. Well, this permutation 2, 4 doesn't move 1. This permutation maps 1 to 3. So currently, 1 is being mapped to 3. I like to draw this with an arrow underneath. And then this permutation takes 3 to 2. So next, 3 is going to 2. So where has 1 gone? 1 has gone to 3, which then goes to 2. So overall, 1 is going to 2. You with me so far? That agrees with this picture down here. Now let's try to figure out where 2 goes. Well, so first we apply this function, and 2 is going to 4. And then this doesn't move 4 anywhere. And this moves 4 to 3. So overall, 2 is going to 4, which is then going to 3. So 2 goes to 3. And now let's see where 3 goes. Okay, 2, 4 doesn't send 3 anywhere. 3, 1 sends 3 to 1. And then this permutation 1, 4, 3, 2 sends 1 to 4. Okay, so 3 is going to 4. 
And finally, let's see where 4 goes. Well, this permutation 4, 2 sends 4 to 2. And then 1, 3 doesn't move 2 anywhere. And then this uh, cycle 1, 4, 3, 2, it sends 2 um, back to 1. Okay, so 4 in total is getting sent to 2 and then to 1. Since 4 is getting sent to 1, to denote this in cycle notation, I just want to close off the cycle. 4 is getting sent back to 1. Okay, so our answer agrees with what we uh, drew out down below. This is indeed the permutation 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, with 4 going back to 1. But the advantage of doing things as I've done up above is that um, I don't need to draw the pictures to get the right answer. Okay. One other comment is that you'll note that um, drawing these colored arrows can help you do this at first. Eventually, you'll get to the stage where you don't need to draw those colored arrows, um, but uh, it's a good practice tool at the beginning. You'll see that each transition on the left-hand side gets uh, traversed exactly once. Each, each possible arrow on the left-hand side appears exactly once if you've multiplied this out correctly. Okay, let me talk through a much harder and longer example. This is as an example that is actually homework problem one on homework number six for my class, uh, Math 366, Introduction to Abstract Algebra at Colorado State University in 2020. So the problem says the following. Write the permutation one, two, four, three, eight, nine, two, three, six, one, eight, nine, six, seven, three, seven, eight, three, in disjoint cycle form. So disjoint cycle form means we don't want cycles that have elements in common, right? The cycle has a seven, as does this one. We want to write this as a product of cycles where each cycle is, has distinct elements from any other cycle. The way to do this is just to multiply these permutations out and see what we get. Okay. So I'm going to write down the problem again. 1, 2, 4, 3, 8, 9, 2, 3, 6, 1, 8, 9, 6, 7, 3, 7, 8, 3. We'll be able to write out the answer right here. There's really not that much work to show. I'll try to draw some arrows as I narrow, narrate through this. Um, <clears throat> But you don't need to draw those arrows. There's very little work to show as long as you understand the process. OK, so to write a permutation in disjoint cycle form, first you see where 1 goes. So 7, 8, 3 doesn't move 1 at all. This next cycle, however, maps 1 to 8. 2, 3, 6 doesn't map 8 anywhere. This next cycle maps 8 to 9. And then this doesn't map 9 anywhere. So in total, 1 is going to 8 and then to 9. So 1 is going to 9. And that's why I put down a 9 next. Now I want to see where 9 goes. So this cycle doesn't move 9 at all. This cycle moves 9 to 6. This next cycle, 2, 3, 6, sends 6 back to 2. This cycle doesn't move 2. And this cycle moves 2 to 4. So in total, 9 has been mapped to 6, and then to 2, and then to 4. 
So 9 is going to 4, and I write down 4 next. Then I ask where is 4 going? This cycle doesn't move 4, 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 this cycle moves 4 to 3. Where is 3 getting mapped? This cycle moves 3 to 7, and then this cycle moves 7 back to 3, and then this cycle moves 3 to 6. The next cycle doesn't move 6, nor does the last. So 3 has been mapped to 7, back to 3, and then to 6. So 3 goes to 6. Where does 6 get mapped? This cycle isn't moving 6. This one's moving 6 to 7. And then 7 is no longer moved by this cycle, this cycle, or this cycle. So 6 got moved to 7, and then didn't move again. Where is 7 being mapped? 7 is being mapped to 8, which then 8 gets mapped to 9. 9 gets mapped back to 8. And then this last cycle doesn't move 8. So 7 got moved to 8 because it went to 8 and then to 9 and then back to 8. All right, let's see where 8 gets mapped. So this cycle moves 8 to 3. And then this cycle moves 3 to 1. And then 1 doesn't get moved by either of these two cycles. But here, 1 gets mapped to 2. So 8 is being mapped to 2 because it went to 3 and then to 1 and then back to 2. And now let's see where 2 goes. This cycle doesn't move 2, nor does this one. This cycle moves 2 to 3. And then 3 gets moved back to 1. So 2 is going to 1. I noticed that, that 1 was the start of the cycle, so I denote that by closing this parenthesis. Okay, so I've told you where 1, 2, 3, and 4 go. I haven't told you where 5 goes. Where does 5 go? Well, this cycle doesn't uh, move 5, nor does this one, nor this one, nor any of the cycles. So 5 just gets mapped to itself. I've told you where 6 goes, where 7 goes, where 8 goes, and where 9 goes. Since 5 is being mapped to itself, since 5 is in a cycle of length 1, we often drop, drop it at the end and just write this. So this is our final answer. We've written this permutation as a, uh, as a product of disjoint cycles. It happens to just be one cycle here. All right, thanks.